Hey guys, Greg here, and let's solve lead code number three, the third question on lead code, longest substring without repeating characters. It is the most classic question for teaching the sliding window algorithm, a really fundamental and universal technique for data structures and algorithms. It very commonly comes up in coding interviews. So we're given a string S and we want to find the length of the longest substring. What's a substring? A substring is a contiguous non-empty sequence of characters within a string. So we want the length of the longest substring without any repeating characters. Okay, so let's look at that in depth here. So the example ABC, ABC, BB, that is going to output three. Now, firstly, let's look at its substrings. So A itself is a substring, AB is a substring, ABC is a substring, all of this stuff is a substring. You could also start at B, and so B is a substring, BC, BCA, those are all substrings. What is not a substring is A and then C and then B here. Okay, that is actually something different called a subsequence. So we mean a contiguous and also non empty sequence of characters. That is a substring. So we want the length of the longest substring without repeating characters, okay? So the length of the longest substring would just be this, except you would need it to not have any duplicate characters. Here at this substring, if you did the whole thing, well, of course, we have multiple Bs, multiple As, multiple Cs, and so you need it to have all unique characters in the substring. Now, we'll cover how we actually do this in a moment, but by sliding window, we mean that the window is anything that is between L and R. So right now, the window is just A. It's just L and R on the same spot. If we expand the window, so R is going to expand the window, here our window would be A and B together. If we then contracted the window, it gets smaller, and notice that it's kind of sliding over in general to the right. It's O of N because we're just, we're always moving these things over here, so that'll be a linear solution. This would again, our window would just be here. We could, for example, slide R a few times over. Our window would be between these characters, or equivalently, our sub string would be B, C, A, B. And again, we could kind of contract this over. Our substring would then go to C, A, B. So let's cover exactly how we're going to do this for this problem. Now we know we don't want duplicate characters, so we definitely want a set. You know, if your mind went to like a hash map or a hash set, that's great. If not, that's also okay. But this thing is a constant lookup where we can immediately see, you know, as long as we have all the stuff in here of the characters we've used, we can do a constant lookup and say in O of one time, we can say, you know, have we used an A before? You know, I'm saying that we have. It's a constant solution to ever ask if we've used a character before. Okay, so we start them at the beginning here. And for sliding window, you always ask the question, is our window valid? Let's always try to make it valid. What do we mean? Well, in this case, by valid, we mean that we don't have any duplicate characters in the substring. You might have a different problem, and you probably will, where you have some different constraint on why it's valid. But here the question is, do we have any duplicate characters? Well, we have no characters so far, so our window is valid. We will add R's character, which is happens to be the same as L's character here, into the set. So we'll say, okay, we add this into the set and we have no duplicate characters. So we've actually seen something so far. We'll keep track of our longest length that we've seen. We only care about the longest length, not the actual substring. Probably we would have initialized this to be zero at the beginning, but now it's been updated to one. So, so far, you know, we've seen a substring, which is just this, which is valid. There's no duplicate characters. And so we should record that length. Now, while our window is valid, we want to expand this over because we want to try and get the longest length here. We're looking for the longest one. Now we moved R over here. Is our window still valid? So this substring, is this still valid? Well, yes, it is. Because if we were to ask if, you know, if this is S here, if we asked if S at R, AKA just this character right here, is this in the set already? Well, no, it's not. So we're going to put that into the set. And then we have a length of two because this is still valid. So we should update that. We'll say our longest length that we've seen so far is two. Let's try to keep this going as long as we can. We move R over that expands our window is s at r aka this character is that in the set already no it's not so this is again valid and so we have a length of three by the way how do we actually calculate the length well we could calculate the length of our set but in general that's not as versatile a solution because we might not always have a set so our window length the current window length is always
always going to be, I'll call it W, that is actually just equal to R, yes, the indice values, R minus L plus one. Why is that the case? Well, here we want the distance between them, which is two, but then we also want to add one because we want inclusive of the characters. And that will make even more sense where at the beginning, this is not a window length of zero. We are looking at a character here. So here, this would actually plug in that we'd have zero minus zero. You wouldn't want this to be a window length of zero. You'd want to add one so that this is a window length of one. Okay, so with this formula, we can always use this formula to calculate given any L and R wherever they're located, you can always calculate the length of the current window with that formula. Okay, but just placing this back to what it was before, we had R over here, we saw a longest length of three, and we have these three characters in the set. Now we'll try to find a bigger one again, but we run into an issue. If we ask if S at R, aka this character, if S at R is in the set, yes, it actually is. Okay, that means that the current substring we're looking at is invalid. It's invalid, so we are not going to update this because what we have here is actually a failure. You want to move L over to start to make the window valid. We want it to be valid at all times. When it's valid, we move over R. When it's invalid, we move over L. Now, if you were just to blindly move L over here, well, that's not going to ever fix the problem because you'd again ask, hey, is this character in the set? Well, yes, it is in the set. And it's always gonna be in the set because you didn't remove it over here. So before we move L over, you have to remove S at L, AKA this character from the set. So the window is invalid, let's move over L. We ask again here, hey, is this valid? Okay, this might be valid. Did this fix the problem? This might have fixed the problem, but it also might not have fixed the problem. Is S at R in the set? No, it's not. Okay, so that did fix the issue. This is again a valid substring. We add A back into the set because we're adding it from S at R. And you could again, if you wanted, you could say, okay, well, did we find a better maximum? No, we didn't. We have a current substring of three. We already actually had a substring of three, but you could calculate that if you wanted to. And then this current window is valid. When it's valid, we move R over. And so then again, we encounter the same issue. We ask, is S at R in the set? Yes, it is. That means we have a duplicate character. This is an invalid substring. Let's make it valid. Before we move L over, we have to take this out here. So we take out S at L from the set. We move this over. Is this valid again? Yes, it is. If you wanted, you could say, okay, well, I found another three. That's great. It's not going to help, but that's fine. We have a valid substring. We would add S at R back into the set. And then we could say if we wanted again, okay, we found another three. That's great. We have a valid substring. So we actually move R over here. Now, again, we encounter the same issue here. We would want to remove S at L from the set. We move this over. We would want to add S at R back into the set. This is a valid substring. I'm going to move a little bit faster now. So we go to the right over here once. Is S at R in the set? Yes, it is. But here, this is the first time we've seen that this actually doesn't fix the issue right away. We have have to take away this character, but that did not solve the problem because B is still in the set. S at R is still in the set. So we try to fix the problem. We go over here. We remove that. And now this is a valid substring. We put B or S at R back into the set. We can move R over. We run into an issue again. We remove S at L and we move this over. We still have an issue. So we move this over here. And then at the very end here, they're equal to each other. We'd actually end up adding S at R or B back into the set. And when R gets to the end here, that is when we'd complete the loop. Okay, so let's write this code. We want L to be initialized at zero, and you might expect me to set R to be zero, and I kind of implicitly will in a moment, but we're gonna end up sending R through a for loop, and we're actually gonna have a for loop and then a while loop inside of that. Sounds like N squared, it's not, we'll see it in a second. So we have L is zero, and we'll set the longest equal to zero as well. That's saying so far, the longest length we found is nothing really. And we're going to have a set that keeps track of duplicates, so set is just an empty set and we'll also get n is equal to the length of our string. Now what we want to do is for r in the range of n and in your mind I certainly wouldn't blame you if you implemented that as a while loop and we're going to do a while loop in a second but you'd actually want r through a for loop and that makes sense because this has got to be a linear solution here. Okay the point of this is that all of this stuff is going to be just o of n coming from this loop right here. We just have to make sure in here that the window is valid and that's what we do right here is this this is basically going to say while it's invalid. It's invalid while S at 
R is in the set. Okay, so it's basically saying we're trying to add this new character on the right into the set, but while it's already in there, that means our current window is invalid. So we fix it exactly like we said. It's just two steps, the set dot remove of S at L, and we haven't actually added anything into it yet, but we will in a second. So we remove S at L from the set, and then we just move on. And so L is going to go up by one. So this is your loop that says while our window is invalid, while we're looking at an invalid substring, invalid in this case, meaning we have duplicate characters, implying that you're unable to just add S at R in the set because it's already there. After we get out of here, this is where we have a valid window. What's the length of our window? Well, I'll call it W is equal to R minus L plus one. We already did that formula. Then we want to set longest, which is going to be our return value. We'll set longest to be the maximum of what it was before and our current window. We want it to be the maximum of itself and the new window length. So if we found a better window length, we want to use that. If we didn't, then we just want to use the old value. Okay, and then at this step, we want to make sure that we actually add into the set S at R. We know at this point, if we're adding it, S at R wasn't already in the set because we have this running while we do have it in the set, meaning we had a duplicate. And after this, we just want to return the longest value that we saw. Okay, so let's really break down what's happening here. Well, you might have been taught that when you have nested loops, that's going to be O of N squared, but it's not that simple. This loop, it's very clearly O of N, like unless you had some clever breaking thing in here. This is definitely just an O of N thing to do. This one, well, that's saying we're going to remove characters from the set. Well, what did we actually add to the set? At most, you can say we've added all of the N characters into the set. So if this is always going to remove a character from the set, that's also going to run at most N times. And really all it's doing is forcing L to move forward. So this is basically going to be O of N as well. Okay, so the overall time complexity of this algorithm, this is going to be a big O of N solution. And the space complexity here, this in this case, it's also going to be big O of N. That's not always the case. A sliding window algorithm in general is a constant space solution, but because to check if the window is valid, we actually have to use a set for this problem. So the space is also going to be O of N. Here's the final solution. Drop a like if you found this helpful and have a great day guys. Bye-bye.